Hi, I'm Leo. And I'm Debbie. And, and we, we are, are Thinking, Thinking Tattoos. Tattoos. a relationship with your customer you need to understand what he want to do you know he have the picture in his head but he cannot draw so I have to tell us what he like you have to, to try to understand the best you can and put that on paper it's not simple like you see in the TV shows that's not real no reality how this tattoo industry do I know every tattoo shop have that much drama that's it's not reality Damn, I make already six mistakes, man. But it's on his back, so he can't see. Yeah, it's cool. <laughs> no, and it's, it's actually less than what he usually does in five or ten minutes. So yeah, look. I'm feeling really positive about today. That's <laughs> good, that's good. You're not hearing the voices today? Never. <laughs> I never hear the voices. <laughs> and when you do have something on your back, Man, you gotta really trust the guy doing it because, like you said, yeah, you see what he's doing. Yeah, and and your friends are gonna tell you the truth. Oh yeah, that <laughs> that looks good. Hey, where's the penis <laughs> in your back? <laughs> what the penis doing in your back, man? <laughs> yeah, but to be a tattoo artist, you need to, you need to be an artist, man. You know, you need to be able to to draw. It's not like the old times. Going to just copy something from the wall and doing somebody else's back. There's way more than that. You need to be able to freehand and change a design, make a custom. So you never do the same thing that in the wall that everybody have. You always try to customize, make something personal. You know, tattoo is, is a reflection of your inside. You know, all my tattoos is it's like a book. Each tattoo is a chart in a book. Everything that happens in my life, I do a tattoo. So I can read my whole life in my arms. You know, have a meaning to me. Not to anybody else, but to me. Tattoos like that, maybe something really personal. It's expression who you are on the inside. Oh crap, sorry. <laughs> Discount. <laughs> <laughs> we do 50 cents for each mistake I make. If I make too many tattoos free. You ever have to pay anybody? <laughs> what? Do you ever have to pay anybody? No, thanks God, not yet. I can run really fast. I am not, you know, I think I should get paid. I listen to the same jokes, but, you know. I'm gonna make overcharge, man. <laughs> so where do you get your creativity? Do you ever go someplace and get inspiration and ideas and or dreams? No, I like to see it with the customer and try to to see what he, what uh, what picture he have in his head, you know, and I try to translate that in a paper. That I think is the funnest part in the job, the relationship you have with your customer. You know, try to understand what you have in his mind and put that on the paper. I think one of the most important things. I really challenge that with him too. Hmm. So if somebody's selecting a tattoo artist, it, should they just sit down with them for a while and talk about their ideas? Or? Yeah, first you need to look at his portfolio, see if you like his work. Then you should see it to make a consultation, say what ideas you have. You know, and then uh, we start to draw, see something that you like, then you come back, approve the design, then you make an appointment. If you don't approve, you redraw, it will be the way you like for the rest of your life. So it needs to be something that you are 100% sure that you want something comfortable to what you have. It's not going to be there forever. Do you ever find yourself getting into a, um, a creative block? You, you, you need to do something to rejuvenate? No, no. It's just, draw for me is always so, so easy, you know. I never, I never have a problem. Since I was a kid, you know, I was getting in trouble in school. I was drawing the whole time. It's something that uh, you're an artist, you have to be able to draw don't matter what. When you like what you do, it's fun. It's easy. 
So let's yeah. say somebody decided that you know this was something that they would like to get into. You, you know, what advice would you give them? Well, tattoos not easy. Like look. If you don't draw good, don't waste your time. You need to find a friendship. In these days, everybody thinks a tattoo artist, you know. Everybody wants to be a tattoo artist. You know, you need a lot of dedication, a lot of time. You need to be good with the machines. You know, it's not that easy like people think, man. You know, after all the TV shows, start to pop tattoo shops here and there. They don't last a long time and they close. Because, you know, it's not only to make money, man, that's art. So basically, you know, if, if you don't have the passion, don't get into it for the money. Yep. Tell me about a tattoo that you you did that uh, touched you. I mean, something that was heavy on emotions. You know, it's always when uh, when the people come back from from Iraq, Afghanistan, and they want to tattoo, you know, the, some names and, you know, the tradition, the the wife and the helmet on the top and people's names, you know, the friends that died. That's something that always touch you, you know. It's something that you really feel sorry and do, but, you know, you're happy when it's done, when the people are happy, but that's something really, really touch. It's part of the job. Yeah, that happens so many times, I mean. What are your thoughts on uh, photorealism? Man, I really like some of the work that people's doing now, man. It's so impressive, man. I think just don't be doing just one style. You know, change. That's you know, not to do just one thing and be you no know, to do just one thing. I'm an artist, you know. You need to be able to draw anything the customer wants. What do you feel that uh, your shop has to offer as far as the thousands of tattoo shops out there if somebody wanted to come? Man, the custom work, man. We have a you be able to do anything you want, any way you like. You know, we, we're proud and, and uh, when you leave the shop, you're happy, you smile. That's the best feeling. You know, it's, it's, yeah, the money is important too, but make the customer happy. It's one of the best feelings you have. You know, not, not many tattoo shops, they care that much. In the end, getting friends to the customer. That's another good part of the job, too. How long have you two known each other? Oh my god. Um, when I first tattooed you, 1995. Right? 96? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. It's been a long time. Maybe longer than that. Yeah. And he come back to get more of my mistakes. <laughs> so, how many sessions is this back then again? This cut, I think, is number 18. At roughly about three hours a session? Uh, a little more than that. Sometimes times, four. Sometimes more, sometimes a little less, you know. Depends how much pain he can take, you know. So do you have a system as far as uh, needles and going into mags or anything like that? or? Well, it depends on the areas, you know. Big areas, I use I use the mag, and small little areas, I use the rounds. Every tattoo artist has their own preference, you know. Um, what works for one, don't work for another, but um, you need to find the best way for you and stick with that. You know, what's important is the final result. If you look good like that, <laughs> then to do that. Yeah. <laughs> so tell me from the customer's perspective, as far as you, when you were selecting your tattoo artist. Well, first, I don't consider myself a client, a customer. I think customers are people that go to gas stations. Um, just like going to a doctor, you're a patient. Here, I'm a client. Um, That's true. The artwork is important. You know, you, you, you have to have an artist that's going to, you know, do what you need him to do. Um, like I had said earlier, I originally came in and had a piece done by someone that worked here that took 
three or four different sittings. So I was able to watch Leo in action. From that point, I got on the internet and I Googled his name and I don't know if it was Google back then. And I saw the work that he had done, where he came from, who he was, and made an appointment to have some work done. And the rest is just basically history. Um, has he done all of my work? No, you know. The tattoo on my, on my arm was done by someone that was very close to me at a time when my wife was passing away. So not only is the design important to me, but again, the person that did it. Um, I, I can't speak for everybody, you know. My reasons for being here are pro probably quite a bit different than, than other people's. I think everybody has their own need, their own reason, their own desire for what they're doing when it comes to to tattooing and how they pick an artist. Um, it just, it jived for me. It worked for me. Well, I mean, this and, if it, and if it works, why, you know, if it's not broke, mm -hmm. why, yeah. why fix it? That's so, true. and again, like I said before, it, it really is more than just the artwork. Um, this guy, is touches me <laughs> in way you know in good ways don't yeah, get I'm me wrong <laughs> I, you know i i won't go for a massage i i'm i'm weird about people touching me you know short of you know my wife or in this you know nowadays the girlfriend so this is somewhat of an intimate relationship yeah. you know um i can't just let anybody be touching me like this. Um, there, there's a lot to it. You know, there's a lot to it. So let's say you, you didn't know this shop and you didn't know Leo and you were giving advice to somebody that was close to you and you guys were going to walk into this shop, what, what would you look for? Um, right off the bat, I'm going to look for health to stuff. Um, the artwork is great, not if you get sick. Um, that has to be the most important thing above anything else. I look at their, I look at their facility, their shop. Is it clean? I look at the bathroom. Is it clean? Um, you know, it, it, it's common sense. It's absolute common sense. With the experience that I have, and I've been getting tattooed for ever since I was 18, and I'm, and I'm 55. I've paced it out, I've spread it out, so I'm able to still enjoy being here yeah. at my older, advanced age. <laughs> people, people ask me, friends. other than my, you know, my friendship with Leo. I can't see anybody going anywhere else. Because if it's not something that Leo can do, I got two, three other artists here that I have faith and trust in who follow all of Leo's procedures. Yeah, everybody that work in the shop, man, need to get along to each other. Everybody need to be good. I have a piece on my leg that was done by one of Leo's apprentices. You know, not because I wanted to be a good guy. I, I liked the kid's dedication and the way he went about learning. You know, and decided that I wanted to have a piece of his. And if I'm not mistaken, he ended up building and designing some tattoo machines yep. that people started using. Which answers yeah, the question that Newman. you had earlier. Yeah, the Numa machine. Um, so, you know, I, I look at a few different things, but, you know, I, I don't want to go look anymore. I don't need to do that. Again, if it's not broke, don't fix it. So, and that's why, you know, that's why my son comes here. Plus, I love the sound of that glove snapping when he puts it on. 
No COVID check. Here. No COVID checks here. They, they're not coming to tattoo. You know, sometimes people can draw really good, but they, they cannot handle the machine. You need to be both. You need to be good with the machines and a really good artist. That's something that's not that easy to find. It's not that many people that are really, really good. Anyone can draw or can tattoo, but not many people can tattoo good. What about uh, care and maintenance? Any preference on uh, Aquaphor versus... You know, I like the Aquaphor, but it's a little bit gr too greasy. You cannot put too much. It's just a little bit. So the best thing, I think, is wash your hands really good before you put the lotion. When you put the lotion, just a little tiny bit on rubbing. If you see the lotions too much, so you never soak. And always clean hands. Yeah, I like uh, I like when when a customer buy a pair of gloves, you no, know, buy a box of gloves, and uh, you just put the gloves on and put the lotion. Well, I did a tattoo because uh, my third will die. You know, it's my <laughs> my little hamster die. I'm gonna do a tattoo of him. That was a terrible. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> so that's like, you know, that's one of those, if someone comes in and says, I, want, up, man. I want a gerbil tattooed right on my ass, those are one of those tattoos that you might say, yeah, I don't really want to do that one. He just went back into the gerbil. We don't do gerbil. We don't do gerbils, you know. That's a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wouldn't that be funny? Like just going down like a tramp stance, having a gerbil crawling down the back of the pants. <laughs> No, I'm not going yeah. something like Come that. On. <laughs> I do for free. I swear to God. That would be funnier than hell. You know, I guarantee there's someone out there that's got it. <laughs> Probably, man. Hi, I'm Leo. And I'm Debbie. And, and we, we are, are Thinking, Thinking Tattoos. Tattoos. You can find us at thinkingtattoos.com. And you're watching Rock yeah, This Magazine. That's a wrap.